Now the Prime Minister has commissioned a new task force to tackle this national crisis. Because you don't need <coughs> to touch ice to be its victim. It's intersecting what? with every aspect of Australian life. Yo, lads, get in the chat now. ASAP. 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 I think I'm going to play some music until all of you guys get in here. Um, hold on. All right, that's better. life, destroying families, causing carnage on our roads and murder in our homes. And the problem is not confined to our cities. Ice is ripping through rural and regional areas, devastating entire towns. Tonight, we meet the innocent victims of ice and measure the true toll of a crisis, the likes of which Australia has never seen. I actually give up. <clears throat> no lads. Get in the chat. Get in the chat. I'm back. But um, listen, I don't know about live reaction to uh, to AFL. I had a lot of copyright issues when I was on live, and it was horrible. Super sup. But um, we back. We back. So. And yes, not just. About to do this ice reaction because I always wanted to learn about ice. Like, how did this even become a thing? You know, and when did this become a thing? I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Are you saying you wanted her out of your life? <sighs> I did. Susan Annesley is a mother at breaking point. Her daughter Britt is 31, a mother herself to three young children and an ice addict. Damn, she look mad pretty. What's she doing on ice? Your mum said she almost wished that you had died because she thought it was the only way you'd find peace. <laughs> yeah. This is a family torn. Yo, she is so pretty, like, for her to have, hold on, let me close my door so my dog don't try to come back in. He be cutting up. But yo, for her to have such a beautiful face and be addicted to ice, it's like, damn. Like, shit, that shit like crack. On a part by ice, Brit's life is in ruins. Her siblings won't speak to her, or Susan has been forced to quit her job as a public servant to care full time for Brit's three kids. Should be enjoying life. Yeah, well, just just see those little kids safe and see a smile on their faces. Enough for us at the moment. We can put our lives on hold. In your <laughs> darkest days, were you aware of what your addiction was doing to your family? <sighs> yeah. Did you care? Yeah, but I couldn't stop. No. I, I'm just, I'm just still, I don't even got to pause it. I'm just still stuck on how beautiful she is. <laughs> and she's on ice, that's crazy. Right now, Australia's in the clutches of the worst that's drug right. crisis we've ever seen. Ice has swept across. Yo, lads, get in this chat. Get in this chat. Man, y'all got me. I'm up at 12 in the morning. Get in this chat. We're reacting to the ice crisis in Australia. 
Isn't she beautiful and she got she on ice? Across the country, from capital cities to small country towns. And here in regional Victoria, it's rampant. This is Bacchus Marsh, 50 kilometres northwest of Melbourne. It's the kind of place where everyone knows their neighbours and everyone knows someone who's on ice. How big of a problem is ice here in Bacchus Marsh? It's huge. Absolutely huge. It's destroying the community. And our children and loved ones are killing themselves and others because of it. And there's nothing being done. Everyone's just watching the carnage. Get off! Are you going to try? Ice! Ice! Yo, nah, they bugged out. She like, ice, ice, I need ice. Yo, nah. So, yo, how do we protect ourselves from the ice heads? Whether it be Bacchus Marsh or whether it be some other city or regional town, uh, it's presenting a problem everywhere. This is such a scourge on the nation. This is the most risky and dangerous of all illegal drugs that are out there. Hey, yo, relax, I'm a comment. I know somebody we put on it right at the top as I the most the harmful open. illegal drug that Australia is facing. Chris Dawson runs the Australian Crime Commission, which has just released the most comprehensive report on ice in our community. I mean, it's frightening when you think that ice use has almost doubled in the past 12 months. The prevalence of daily, weekly use is getting very, very high. Over 1.3 million people have said we've tried it at some point in time in their life. So those figures are very alarming. Britt Hallett first tried ice at a party six years ago. Like most addicts, she thought she could control it. She yeah, that's why I don't do nothing but weed, man. Because, you know, it's just, I mean, I mean, if I ever went to Colombia where, you know, cocaine is legal, you know, I might get a little sick. I don't know. That's it. Just a little bit. But I don't know. Because I don't want to be addicted to nothing, bro. Bad enough, I'm already addicted to the dope. You know what I mean? Couldn't. I was in denial for so long about my drug use and hiding it and live such an isolated life from it. When I first meet Britt, she's been clean for 27 days. No mean feat for someone who's been addicted for six years. And for much of that time, if Brit wasn't erupting in a... She talking about she'd been clean for 20-some days. That's not enough days. She might... I don't know. I mean, I'm proud of her, but for her to be doing interviews and talking about it, I don't know. That might be triggering. Fit of rage, she was comatose in bed. Brit wasn't only destroying her own life, she was putting her three children aged two, three, and seven, in serious danger. I knew I was doing the wrong thing, but I didn't understand why I was in bed laying there, like I just couldn't move. So you're in that state when your three little kids are at home mm. and you're mm. meant to be yeah, their I mum looking after them. Crazy, mm -hmm. That must have been so frightening for them, seeing you like that. Mm. Yeah. So it just got worse and worse from there. Her son used to get really frightened when mum would be really angry and she'd pull a knife out of the drawer and he didn't know what she was going to do with it. Oh, hell no. Nah. And then he would get up and make his little sister's breakfast. And it, it absolutely killed me as the 
grand paragraph and just listen to that. <laughs> Damn, yo, you could feel her pain through the screen. But ice hasn't only ravaged Susan's immediate family. Just going past what's known as Drago Court. Down here on the left? Yes. Um, and everyone knows that's where you can go to buy ice. Yes. It's a big problem. Yo, this reporter bad. She cute. I like her. Julie is Susan's sister, Brit's aunt. She has a son addicted to ice and has spent countless nights driving the streets of Bacchus Marsh looking for him. Coming up here on the left, um, I've pulled my son out of a house many a times in my pyjamas at night. That's incredibly dangerous no. of you to be busting indoors in the middle of the night. These are drug houses. Yeah, I suppose, but no. Not for my kids. I'd run, out, run over broken glass to protect them. For Susan, she knew she couldn't save her daughter, but she could rescue her grandchildren. So at age 52, she gave up her career and along with her partner, David, took in Brit's kids. Mum had given up on me and she could only take care of my kids. <laughs> and she's just, she said, I, I can't I help you it. anymore. And you need to help yourself, but I didn't know how to help myself. I can't believe this, yo. Something so beautiful, bro. That drug just came and destroyed them. Was that the hardest decision you've ever had to make to choose between your daughter and your grandkids? Yeah. It was absolutely heartbreaking because she said, Mum, and I know that she loves them. I didn't want to take her children away from her, but they couldn't be left with her. Coming up, Busting the Backyard Cooks. We are finding a drug lab on nearly a daily basis. Police fight back. This is such a scourge on the nation. And victims who never stood a chance. The collision was so violent, he was thrown 52 metres. Why our house? Why is Aiden? <laughs> My son was murdered so he could get a hit of ice. That's next on 60 Minutes. What? Queensland police raiding an ice lab. Someone is going out the back door. It's a scene playing. Don't, don't, mate, drop a comment, drop a comment. Out across Australia from the suburbs to regional towns. Where is and what's seized ends up in evidence rooms like this. It's quite a confronting visual, this room. I can't believe these are all drug labs. Yes, they are. Each represents a, a drug lab that we've taken off the streets. When it comes to drug labs, these are the exhibits that can kill you. Detective Senior Sergeant Jeff Marsh from Queensland's Drug Squad says almost anyone can make ice. The labs his team is finding are small, mobile and easily hidden. In a bathroom, even the boot of a car. This is the most basic backyard operation that we find. We actually call them in Queensland box labs because you can basically get the entire equipment. Yo, not they showing us how to make ice, I'm screaming. Apparatus and chemicals into a box. How many labs are you uncovering? We are finding a drug lab on nearly a daily basis throughout Queensland. Backyard cooks aren't even the biggest problem. Crime Commission boss Chris Dawson says it's the global drug cartels that are responsible for the bulk of the ice that's flooding Australia. They're the lowest of the low. Uh, they will be there for absolute greed and absolute profit. 
They don't care, of course, to the harm that comes from this. Uh, and we're talking people dying. Are we losing the fight against this drug? Well, I think it's an enduring fight that we have to continue on. Um, I we're not winning it though, are we? Well, presently the trends are going north. With more and more people using ice, the risks to everyone are obvious. The drug's violent consequences can strike anywhere and anyone. Like my son was murdered so he could get a hit of ice. That's it. Casey Veal's 10-month-old son, Zayden, was brutally murdered by an ice addict during a random burglary. The first Casey knew anything was wrong was when she woke to find they'd been robbed. When I walked over to the cot and I've pulled the blankets back, that's when I've seen his face and there was blood oh. everywhere underneath him. Zayden had been repeatedly bashed, then stabbed 32 times with a homemade copper baton. Oh my, who does that to a baby? Nah, how do you protect yourself from an ice addict? Like what? Oh my goodness. He was rushed to hospital, but Zayden could not be saved. He was gone. He was gone, so I just, I just asked him if I could have him. I just wanted to hold him. I didn't want him to be alone in this huge bed by himself with all these tubes. Hey, don't do it, lads. I cried and I said to him, Don't do it, lads. Don't do it, lads. Yo, this is... <clears throat> this is painful. Like, you know... We need to shine light on this and we need to know how to handle this. I need to know how do I handle somebody that's on ice and they're like coming toward me. I don't know. Like this, this is crazy. Yeah, this drug is insane. Do you guys hear this shit? I'm well, so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like I failed. That was my only job was your mom was to look after you and I did it. Weeks later, police arrested 21-year-old Harley Hicks. Yeah, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. It puts it all into circles. Smack yeah. bang. I understand that. A known but, ice but, addict in the Bendigo area of central Victoria. I had nothing to do with that. Absolutely nothing. He is currently serving a life sentence. Harley Hicks was responsible for all of his actions that night. He is the one that killed Zay. Yeah, yo. No, that ice is insane. And he said, it's like he had no remorse. He can't even take responsibility for killing that little child. He's sitting there like, you know, I, I didn't do that. And da, 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 da. Like he's not even taking responsibility for it. Oh my goodness, this is so sad. But do you think ice played a part? I think that that encouraged his rage. And he took that rage out on my infant son. Could have been anyone's home, anyone's child. And it, it tortures us because it's always like something that's, why me? What? God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. So it super sucks, but that is hard. That is a hard, how do you do that to an infant? Like he was a coward. He couldn't even try to fight her. He went for the baby. What a punk. I hope they beat him up in jail. Yes, I see you. Hey, Casey. How are you? You said, what's up? I don't know what WSP means. Does that mean what's up? Chat, what's up? What's up? Shout out to the day ones in the chat. Three years off ice. Let's get it, yo. Drop a comment for that. Three years off ice, man. Don't do that shit. That shit is horrible. It's mother dope, bro. It's mother dope. Why our house? Why Zayden?
As horrific and tragic as Casey's loss is, it's the randomness that is most frightening. Whether you're at home or on the roads, you never know where ice could strike. What happened at this intersection last year is a terrifying example of ice colliding head on with the community. In January 2014, 29-year-old Nailima da Costa decided to drive his car through Melbourne while high on ice. Oh my, it was a oh my, oh no, 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 no. Trust me, the baby, I was already disgusted. I was already disgusted. But that means that when you're on that shit, you literally just what? Do you just like blank out? Did he just lose control behind the wheel? This is a lie. This is a lie. This is a lie, okay? This is a lie. Decision that would change the lives of three families forever. Despite the lights being red, Da Costa came screaming through this intersection at 120 kilometres an hour, hitting pedestrian Tony Parsons as he crossed the road. The collision was so violent, he was thrown 52 metres, landing about here. His wife Sue, who'd been walking right alongside him, could only watch on in horror. Da Costa then slammed side on into a car, carrying five members of the one family. They were returning home from a wedding. Savas Manalau and his wife of 38 years, Ismini, died at the scene. Tony Parsons, the pedestrian, was killed on impact. Nailima da Costa, the ice addict, survived. Why is it always like that? Why is it every time there's a drunk driver, a fucking psychopath, a lunatic behind the wheel of a car, they always survive? And the innocent don't. And was jailed for 16 years. It's the sort of story that's disturbingly common. Britt Hallett was high on ice when she got behind the wheel in 2011. Do you think about that accident much? Yeah. For a long time, I was reliving it daily and just mm -hmm. having panic attacks. And you could have killed that I man. I could have. Mm. That's insane. Brit ploughed into a car driven by an off-duty police officer. Mum Susan believes only luck saw them both survive. She was lying in a brace, couldn't move. Her face was black and blue. She had tubes coming out of her. We were absolutely beside herself. Mm -mm. That crash should have been a wake-up call, but it's only now that Brit is ready to beat her addiction. She's lost everything that's important to her. While Susan and her long-term partner, David, a burdened with raising Brit's three kids. We think we've probably got these little kids for a very long time, yeah? What does our retirement mean? It maybe it means going back to work and working harder just to survive. Has mm. it put a strain on your relationship? It has. It has. <sighs> David's a uh, wonderful person and um, he could have walked out many of times <laughs> but he loves those kids and he loves me and I really don't know how he's hung in there. We just feel like we've been left on our own. Mm -mm. One family in one small town. I can't believe this. Enduring a sadly familiar ordeal. Mm. But after years of pain, the focus now is solely on the future. Britt is in three months of rehab. 
determined to be a mother to her three children, finally free from the clutches of ice. You do have a lot of work ahead of you. I do, I do. It's not going to be smooth sailing. There's, yeah, like, yeah. Um, but I'm aware of that and I'm ready for it. Mm -hmm. Alright, what are we doing next? What are we doing next? Drop those comments. Do you think she can do it? I come from a really, really strong family. We, we have not got give up in us. And I just hope mm -hmm. that Brit has got that in her to keep fighting. And for those beautiful little kids to do it for them because they're just gorgeous. They deserve their mum back. I want to be someone they can be proud of and someone that they can rely on and they got mum to support them and, you know. Neil, drop those mm -hmm. comments. What's and next? What's next? next? I'm ready and I want it now. I'm just so grateful that I get it now. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up mm -hmm. with the latest from 60 Minutes... All right, what are we doing next? I'm trying to find something that I wanted to look up. It's this Australian guy I like. Um, all right, what are we doing next? What are we doing next? Drop those comments. I'm waiting for y'all. We could do some Spain. Huh? Where we at next, lads? Where we at next, lads? Where the lads at? Shout, shout, shout out to the lads. Yeah, I seen it. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to do the Trap Lord Ross. Actually, I wanted to listen to this Trap Lord Ross documentary. Where is it? He don't tell me he deleted it. Yo, Trap Lord deleted his last documentary. That's crazy. I didn't even get to see it. Well, it's a clip, but this is it. I wanted to watch this hood tour. Yeah, I seen that. Um, you gotta. I dropped that. That actually drops today at five a.m. But you can see it. Um, you can see it if you if you become a member. So do that. Come on, you a day one. Let's get it. Throughout 2021, Suspect from Active Gang was having success after success with his music, and he was using these high-profile opportunities to promote and glorify his violent lifestyle as a Camden gang member. On June the 24th, 2021, Suspect has the opening verse and a second verse on the huge plugged-in cipher with Fumes the Engineer. In his lyrics, he rapped about the murder of a rival from 51st, Lewis Blackman, aka Dotty, the Peckwater teen who gatecrashed the Ops party and ended up being killed by members of Tottenham Gang OFB, with Suspect rapping that they dropped him, so I can't complain. And shouting out his locked up friends. In the song, he raps that he has two G's in his blunt, a metaphor for the two gang members, Seamus and Culprit. I can't even watch this from this, like I need the whole backstory. So we're gonna have to watch something else, but I do wanna watch a documentary. So we're gonna watch a documentary. I'm in the mood for a documentary. Rappers say things straight up. But... Yo, I know, I know, I like, yo, I like Suspect. That's why I wanted to watch that, but I, I need to watch it from the beginning. I want to watch a documentary. Let's watch a documentary. Which one y'all want to watch? You 
why fans think Juice will what? The sad downfall of Bow Wow. No. All right, let's let's watch this. Bow Wow shocked the world when he rocked the stage with Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre at just six years old. I'm gonna watch this until y'all drop the comments. So drop the comment. Drop the comments. He ran the rap game in the early 2000s with a ton of platinum hits, but eventually he destroyed it all and became a walking joke. From lying about private jets to beefing with pro wrestlers, today we're breaking down how Bow Wow lost it all and completely fell off. Bow Wow came up in Columbus, Ohio. It's not a city known for rap, but Bow Wow was obsessed with hip hop as a toddler. He started rapping at just three years old, and by the time he was six, he was already bumping hardcore crews like NWA. You don't see a lot of six year olds at rap shows. Yo, dead ass. Yo, that's how we got to. Yo, I used to love Bow Wow, yo. Fun fact. I used to love Bow Wow. You know, back in my younger straight days, which straight was forced upon me. You know, that's what they do. But yeah, I used to love Bow Wow. But Bow Wow was such a big fan of hip hop that his mom took him to see Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Going to a rap concert before you're even 10 years old is wild. But what happened next was even crazier and changed Bow Wow's life forever. In the middle of the set, Dre and Snoop asked if anyone in the crowd wanted to hop on stage and rap. Bow Wow put his hand up immediately and they picked him out of the audience. Next thing you know, a six year old was rocking the mic alongside two living legends. As soon as the show was over, Bow Wow and his mom went backstage to kick it with everyone. Snoop was so impressed with his skills that he decided to become his mentor, and he's the one who gave him the name Lil Bow Wow. Before that, he was going by Kid Gangsta, but Snoop gave him a better name. Yeah, cause Kid Gangsta sound crazy. <laughs> Yo, shout out Snoop for changing Bow Wow name, cause Kid Gangsta sound lame as hell. And invited him to follow along for the rest of the tour. Snoop even featured him on his Doggy Style album, and out of nowhere, Death Row Records had a seven-year-old kid on the label. Death Row is one of the most infamous labels in the game. Suge Knight is famous for brutally beating rappers and his own employees, and he was allegedly the dude who paid to have Biggie killed in LA. Dre ended up leaving Death Row first because of how wild the situation was getting, and Snoop left after Tupac was shot to death in Vegas. He knew that Death Row wasn't the place for a kid like Bow Wow to be, so before he left, he linked him up with a producer named Jermaine Dupri. Dupri helped Bow Wow really break into the industry, and in 2000, he dropped his debut album, Beware of Dog. He was only 30. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, that album was actually fire. Yo, you can't front and act like you ain't like Bow Wow when you were younger. Don't even lie. 13 years old, but everyone was rocking with Bow Wow style from the jump, and his mm -hmm. album ended up going double platinum. Bow Wow. Yo, I thought Bow Wow was Snoop Dogg's son that he ain't wanna, he ain't wanna um, he ain't wanna tell us about because he married and shit. <laughs> oh, thank God I put that out. Yo, guys, guess what I found the other day? I found my Iggy Azalea footage. I told you guys I used to be an Iggy fan, right? Did I tell you guys that? I think I did. You guys said I did in your line. So I used to be an Iggy fan. I was like super obsessed with Iggy. This is how life comes back around full circle, right? And this is, I went to an Iggy concert. Like that's that's the footage of the Iggy concert. Like how cool is that? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I'm gonna um I'm gonna do a story time one day. Yeah, so I was going through my old phone and I was like, yo, I gotta I gotta tell the lads about these stories. Like, bro, like I got a ho the hotel party. I, the first time I've ever threw a hotel party, it was insane. It was like better than Project X because nobody got arrested. So, you know. Kept it pushing in 2002 and went platinum again with his second album. But he wasn't happy just being a star in the rap game. That same year, he got the lead role in a basketball movie called Like Mike. He dropped a little from his name and started going by just Bow Wow. And in 2003, he released his third album under- Yep, and that's when it all went downhill. <laughs> Cause what? That after, the, after the first two albums, like, you know, I mean, I still was a Bow Wow fan, but I'm gonna tell you right now, as a Bow Wow fan, we know that that's when it all went downhill. There's his new name. The project didn't run up numbers like its first two, but it still went gold and had a couple of hits. Bow Wow didn't drop a new project for a couple years, but his name was still buzzing in the industry. Then he came back in 2005 and proved that he was still on top. Before his next album, he dropped the track Let Me Hold You and hit number one on the rap chart and number four on the Billboard Hot 100. Then he followed that up with a song with Sierra and at the same time announced that they were dating. 
His next album went platinum and it seemed like nothing could stop Bow Wow. He was on TV, in movies, and still had platinum records. Back then, everything was going so great and it looked like Bow Wow would be a superstar forever. In 2006, he went gold again off his record The Price of Fame, but he took another break after the album drops and that turned out to be a big mistake. Bow Wow dropped a couple of mixtapes over the next couple of years, but they didn't make much noise in the industry. And by the time he came back with a new album in 2009, it was clear that most of his fans had already moved on. Right? Because I never even heard of that other album they just showed. <laughs> what the hell was that? Huh. New Jack City 2 came out and only sold around 30k in the first week. Those aren't bad numbers for someone just getting started, but when you know that Bow Wow's first record sold over three times that in the first week, it doesn't look good for his career. Even though the album didn't run up big numbers, Bow Wow stayed on the grind and signed a new deal with Cash Money Records. He started hyping up his new record and said it would feature some of the biggest stars in the game like Lil Wayne, Meek Mill, Nas, Snoop Dogg, and more. But it's been 14 years and the album still isn't out. He released a single for the album in 2010, then followed it up with another in 2011. Nobody knew it was taking so long, but in 2012, he dropped a couple of more singles that didn't pick up any buzz at all. Running up weak numbers wasn't his only issue. That same year, news broke that Bow Wow was ordered to start paying 3K a month in child support. Mm -hmm. Then a few months later, Bow Wow mm -hmm. claimed that he was completely broke. Facts, W Ciara, W Ciara, Ciara fine as fuck. He had earned millions throughout his career, but Bow Wow claimed that he was bringing in 4K a month and only had $1,500 in his bank account. It might have just been an attempt to get out of child support payments though, because the very next day, news broke that he had been hired to host 106 in Park on BET. In 2013, Bow Wow told fans that he wanted to raise his daughter and become more mature before he dropped a new album. But by 2015, there was still no news. He had signed with Cash Money six years earlier, but in 2015, he left the label without ever dropping a single project with them. According to Bow Wow, he wasn't happy because they wouldn't let him release his music when he wanted to. But rumors say that Cash Money just didn't have any faith that he would ever make an album. He signed a deal with Bad Boy Records later that same year. But in 2016, he shocked everyone by announcing his retirement. The only thing is, it wasn't that much of a shock considering he had barely released any new music in almost 10 years. And Bow Wow immediately got clowned online for the announcement even though nobody cared in the first place. Bow Wow told everyone he would still release one more album. <laughs> yo, they be roasting them, yo. Why they be... Niggas say even though no one cared in the first place. <laughs> yo, this AI should be disrespectful, son. But by that point, nobody was expecting much out of him. He was still picking up some small acting jobs, but his rap career was dead. It was wild how far his career had already fallen off, but it was about to get way worse. In May 2017, Bow Wow hopped on social media and posted a pic of a private jet, and in the caption he talks about flying to New York for the press run of his new show, Growing Up Hip Hop. His career was already going down the drain, so people were shocked that he was flexing a private jet. But that's when he got caught in a lie and went viral like crazy in the worst way possible. After Bow Wow posted the jet, someone else posted a photo of him riding on a normal flight and called him out for capping about flying private. The backlash was insane, and social media exploded with people clowning him. The Bow Wow Challenge hashtag was everywhere, with people clowning him for lying about his lifestyle. 50 Cent started taking shots at him over the situation too, but Bow Wow said that none of it bothered him. Bow Wow said he just used all the attention to promote his new show and that he wasn't even capping about flying on the jet. According to him, he just posted the pic because he liked it and was traveling that day, but he wasn't trying to trick anyone into thinking it was his photo. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he tried to hit us with the okie doke. <laughs> he think we stupid. A lot of people called Yo. Cap on his explanation of the story, but that wasn't the only time Bow Wow made headlines for the wrong reasons. In 2019, news broke that Bow Wow and his girlfriend had both been arrested for battery after they got into a wild fight. It's not clear exactly how it went down, but both of them looked rough in the mugshots and Bow Wow had scratches all over his face. The actual fight wasn't caught on camera, but a video came out showing them arguing in an elevator before it popped off. The video shows Bow Wow snatching something out of her hand and getting all up in her face, while his girl tried to turn away and ignore him. The video makes it seem like he was the one who started everything, but nobody knows what really happened after they left the elevator. Fighting his girlfriend made him lose even more fans, but now he's trying to get some new ones by getting hey, into fake fights. Back in 2021, Bow Wow announced that he wanted to work with the WWE and get into wrestling. And last year it looked like he was actually going to make it happen. He tried to shoot a shot with a wrestler named Jade Cargill on Twitter, but she clapped back and said Bow Wow can't afford her. 
then one month later, a video came out showing Jay trying to run up on Bow Wow while he was backstage at a tour stop. At first, nobody knew if the beef was real or not. It seemed really random for Bow Wow to be getting into fights with professional wrestlers, but it turns out it was all a publicity stunt. Mm. Apparently, it still didn't get enough attention to get Bow Wow a wrestling contract because he still never had a match. Bow Wow hosts some TV shows and has a few. Yeah, I like um, yeah, I like UK rap. Ain't that where Suspect from? Suspect from the UK, right? I was I was gonna watch the um the Trap Lord Raw Suspect video. Drop a comment, y'all wanna y'all wanna see that? We could listen. We could get into that because I like him. Get into the story behind that. You acting job, but it's crazy how much more successful he was as a. Shout out New Zealand. Shout 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 out New Zealand. New Zealand, hope you feeling good. Kid than he is now. Maybe one day he'll make a comeback album and prove he's still popping. But until then, it looks like he'll just be a meme to everyone who wasn't around to see him blow up in the early 2000s and only saw the crazy downfall. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. I ain't gonna lie, I like that one. What's a good video? Uh, what did it say? Uh... Yes, that video dropped, okay? The Spanion video dropped. It's out now for members only at 5 a.m. My time is going to drop. So that video drops in like four hours. Yeah, that video drops in four hours. Have you listened to... No, what is that? The song is called Sad? Um, all right, let's get into some, oh, since I got New Zealand in the chat, we can get into some New Zealand drama. See what's going on over there in New Zealand. I got some gangs or something in there. New Zealand deadliest gangs. <gasps> no way. Oh, hell no. I can't show that on live. <laughs> New Zealand against this paradise. What? Oh, Grid Sparta. Let's get into New Zealand. The impact of New Zealand clubs and gangs is a topic of significant discussion, encompassing their activities, strength, composition, and apparent growth. While calculating club or gang membership numbers is challenging, understanding the available data sources and their limitations is crucial. According to the Department of Corrections, gangs and biker clubs have been present in New Zealand communities and prisons for generations, deeply rooted in certain parts of- That's Kat. You're saying that you only knew that I was American because the Australians told you I was American? I 100% sound American. So that's, that's Kat. <laughs> that's Kat. I definitely sound American. It's <laughs> like, that's Kat. No, PR said is a rude from, let me see. Let me see what y'all talking about. Let me see. Oh, Iggy, yeah, you right, because, yo, I ain't going to lie. I only, the only reason why, and this is a funny story. It's going to be short, because I know y'all want me to get, get to this. But the only reason why I even like Nick, um, Nikki, <laughs> Iggy, is because Nicki Minaj had dissed her. I was like, who the fuck is she dissing? And I was like, oh, let me look her up. And I said, oh, this is a pretty little white girl. But I ain't thinking a million years she was Australian. She turned the accent off and everything. It's crazy. Right? Like, how the hell you just turn your accent off? <laughs> Yo, she thought she was going to get far. I'm screaming. The funny thing is she might have got far if she would have just embraced her actual culture. She's a weirdo.
what's all right when I do man wrong You're doing it wrong if your ops ain't flag Three of them got knife, the other got knife, then you throw some bang Three last Damn. year Damn! Which... What is, where they from? Hmm. What part of Australia Iggy from? Should have been nine. They ain't been the same since shell to mice. One eye closed, I'm in the field that snap. Searching the stream, trying to do it like Jack. It feels so right when I do, man, wrong. You're doing it wrong if your ops ain't flag. Mm. Three of them got knife, the other got knife, then you felt some bind. Three uh -huh. last year when it should have been nine. They ain't been the same since shell to mice. Uh -huh. One eye closed, I'm in the field that snaps. Uh uh. Yeah, you right. I should have knew London. Yeah, you right. I know what my lads sound like. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, lads. I kind of know what y'all sound like now. That's a good thing. That means I'm learning. Hell no. Hell no. That shit is trash. I, I answered that question. Searching the stream, trying to do it like Jack. Fuck 14 moves, not a single leg shot. Fuck a red top, no, your boy got sent oh. off. You mean strikers, injury prone. Got a times three worst far with his head top. Me and T trapped tag team on Rex. And then bro picked up where he left off. Hey. We ain't gonna go if it's a dead drop. Sick of these puppies, I really want a next dog. Give, give hey. man's word to a next, but today let's not. We got down sticks. I just rolled S1 in a Rizla. Take a picture while I burn his head. No, no black. Oh, they violating. Niggas is getting bodied all up and through this song. I'm about to go give me a blood. Hold on, I ain't got no more blood. I know give me a blunt. This is getting body all up and through the song. Who? What's good, Jack? Jack okay? What up, chat? Oh, the chat getting active now. We lit. Let's go. Let's get it. Might as well give me a blunt. Let, let me know how active we, we trying to get tonight. Let's search. So we purchase red tools, trees, fools and stems and skins. We trust our trust in skins, put his trust in his. And he still got chef. Suck son got dead for get back. They ain't got back since my man passed. Stop stuff got sat on his ass. Forensics putting up tents on the grass. Geez, we had some heart. Tried put his dudes up and he left with scars. My GID still getting it done. Put four in a month and a boy with the stars. Jump, jump out, gang man blasted. Starts got tanned and his cousin departed. Rotted. Bands got a heady like his dog did. So did snaps and his eye went walking. What? Got placed in a Yo, he said his eye went walking. Did y'all hear that line? I mean, you know, it's, it's just for entertainment purposes only, so. But, like, yo, did y'all hear that bar just now? Yo, that bar is insane. Yo. What? It's insane. Casket. S1 got dashed in a basket. Baby. The get backs are retarded. Over five dead and they worry about charting. We, we cause the Lambeth tension, make man cry when I ride for the bridgings No link cups, we ain't doing no friendships, let me just gather my thoughts on the reckless It's funny how they try it on us, but they don't want justice for Glendon They still chill with the use that left him, kill confirmed, you respond on a pendant It feels so right when I do man wrong, you're doing it wrong if your ops ain't flag Yo, this beat is bananas This beat is bananas, bro Three of them got knife, the other got knife, then you felt some bang. Three last year when it should have been nine. They ain't been the same since shells to mice. One eye closed, I'm gonna feel that snap. Searching the stream, trying to do it like Jack. It feels so right when I do, man, wrong. You're doing it wrong if you're upset. Oh, search and destroy. Sad. Oh, I get it. It took me a while to catch on. I wasn't looking at the comments. I get it. I get it. Bad. Three of them got knife, the other got knife, then he felt some bang. Three last year when it should have been nine. They ain't been the same since she was the mouse. One eye yeah. closed, I'm gonna feel that like snap. Searching the stream, trying to do it like Jack. Damn, that shit just sound like a disrespectful song, but thank God it's just for entertainment purposes only. Uh, Logan City, rapper. I think I just did him. I did him, didn't I? I did him in section 60. He's fire. He's dope. Wait, somebody said 37. 37 what? He has a song called 37? You don't got a song called 37. You just say 37. 37 what? I actually want to hear this guy again. What's this guy's name? I want to hear more from him. Like, his, this shit was fire.
what that name is um a l i i'm following i got you guys i'm a little high but don't worry i'm focused <laughs> this guy <laughs> 